You're my savior. Jesus, you're my king. Jesus, you're my maker. You're the ruler of everything. When I call you, I feel freedom. When I call Jesus, you're my savior. Jesus, you're my king. Jesus, you're my maker. You're the ruler of everything. When I call you, I feel freedom. When I call Jesus, you're the master of everything. Jesus, you're my savior. Jesus, you're my king. Jesus, you're my maker. You're the ruler of everything. How many know this? When I call you, I feel freedom. When I call you, I feel release. Oh, Jesus, you're the master of everything. Oh, Jesus. You're the master of everything. Jesus. 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 Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. 
Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. For the next 30 seconds, somebody just worship the name of Jesus. Come on, for the next 30 seconds, just worship the name of Jesus. Come on, for the next 30 seconds, just worship the matchless name of Jesus. The name that has power in it. The name that's above every name. Jesus, what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I'm singing There is power, power, wonder-working power. It's in the blood of the Lamb. Of the Lamb. And the Lord of the There is power, power, wonder-working power. In the precious blood of the Lamb. Come on, let's say it one more time. There is power, power, wonder, working power. It's in the blood. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, wonder, working power. It's in the precious blood of the Lamb. Thank 
you, Jesus. Come on, clap your hands for Jesus as you take your seats. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. You may be seated in his presence. We honor the Lord for his presence that is always here to meet us, to lead us and to guide us. We honor the Lord for Pastor Gray and Kathy today. Why don't we bless the Lord for them this morning? Not going to prolong the time. We're going to pick up where we left off last week. And really understanding that we are engaged in a real battle, but we have already won the war. We already won the war. We understanding that in many battles, when you're trying to win a war and there's a war going on, it may appear at one given time or another that one side is being favored over the other maybe some casualties and some injuries. But I don't believe that any country like ourselves would ever enter into a war, not a battle, but a war, unless you have assessed the enemy's weapons. You have assessed your own weapons and you know that if I engage in this warfare, that I will come out with the victory. I'm gonna lose some stuff, but I'm gonna come out with the victory. Amen, somebody. And some of you all are afraid to lose some stuff, afraid to take a hit, afraid to take a challenge, but you're after the war. You don't faint in the midst of the battle. Come on, somebody. You don't faint in the midst of the battle. Your goal and your eyes are fixed on the end result. And the end result is that I win in Jesus Christ. And I don't win some of the time. I win all the time. The Bible said that we are, we are destroyed. We are destroyed because we have a lack of knowledge. So we're not going to be like the scripture that says one beating against the wind and not knowing who our enemy is. And just praying feverishly and fervently, but not effectively. The scripture brings about the combination of the two, that the effectual, 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 Fervent prayers of a righteous man availing the much. Effectual. That means when I open up my mouth, I bring about change in my prayers. Amen, somebody. Let's take a little of the bottom off and put some more top on. Means I, I not only affect what I am praying about, but I infect whatever has been laid there to hinder what it is that God has for me. I leave an impression. I'm not just somebody that's just crying and weeping and praying and slobbing. I know what I'm doing in the spirit. 
Amen, somebody. Know what you're doing in the spirit. We're not just out here beating against the air. We're in a battle with the enemy and we want him to know when we hit him. Okay, you just didn't, you didn't say anything like that. Because we got a lot of glory, hallelujah people, but we don't have a lot of warfare people. Because it's not just going to take shouting. You're going to have to engage in a real battle. And all the stuff, and let me tell you something, let me tell you something that can get you going about, about, uh, about prayer. You start thinking about all the things that the enemy has done to you, to your family, and all the stuff that he has yet planned to do and have not yet accomplished. That right there helps you to understand that every chance I get to shut him down, I'm going to do that. Thank you, Jesus. So last week, we were talking about, we were talking about effectual, the effectual fervent prayers, and we were talking about the protocols of the kingdom of darkness. Now, if you don't think that I, that I am under some kind of warfare for preaching this kind of stuff, don't you fool yourself. I was talking to my mother yesterday, and and she was like, you know, how do you feel? I said, I'm still not feeling well. And she said, well, why don't you stay home? I said, I got to go tomorrow if I go on a stretcher. I said, because, because I'm, not just, I'm not just engaging in frivolous, oh, we worship you, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Oh, no, 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 no. We're revealing the mysteries of darkness. And once you know how your enemy operates, then you can no longer be deceived by him. I just said something right there. He'll keep us shouting all day long. But see, the Holy Ghost knew, he already knew, you know, the, the enemy already knew, I knew. You know, you're not gonna just talk about the kingdom of darkness and he not try to attack some place. But that's where that's where the body of Christ has to get to the point where we become we become resilient and we become and we become resistant. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But see, see, listen, listen, when the enemy knows that no matter what he does to you, you're going to keep coming anyway. Sick, depressed, under attack. Oh, you don't hear me. Money, no money. I'm going to tell you why I say that. Turn the reverb down. So I'm gonna give it. Tell you why I say that. Tell you why I say that. Because he thinks that we are engaged in the modern day era of Christendom. I'm from old school. I ain't from this new age stuff. Because see, the new age people, when they take a hit, they give up. New people, when they get sick, they stay home. I ain't hear nobody talk to me right there. I ain't hear nobody talk to me. But see, but see, but when you know in whom you believe, you go with cancer. Honey, you, sh you shout with tuberculosis just like ain't nothing going on. Because you know that you want to let the devil know that in my last breath, I'm going to spend my last breath. The last energy I have, giving God the prize. Because the Bible said, he that cometh to God must come believing that he is. And that he's a rewarder to them that diligently see. He's a rewarder to them that diligent. He's a rewarder. That means if I keep coming in the midst of where I am, he's going to do something. He's got to do something. He cannot go back on his word. Y'all sit down, we're going somewhere today. So then we understand that we, that, that according to the book of Ephesians, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. (laughs) 
So then in our overview of last week, before we get to this week, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, we wrestle against principalities. First, first there is, now, now watch this, watch this, watch this. First, there is, there is Satan. There is Satan himself. We wrestle not against, we wrestle not against Satan. Let me tell you why. We don't wrestle against Satan because Satan has already been cast down. He's already been overthrown. We don't have to throw him down. He's thrown down. He was already cast out of heaven. So the Bible said that he took a third of, a third of heaven with him. So now we don't wrestle against him because he's already been cast down. We wrestle against those that believe him. We wrestle against those that follow him. We wrestle against his principalities. Those that are taking assignments from a fool. Okay. You take an assignment from somebody that's already been thrown down. Okay. So our first stages of our first stages of warfare, it's principalities. And the principalities are the highest ranking demonic forces in the kingdom of darkness. They operate on a national level in laws and policies. They affect the White House. So when people say, you know what, I just believe the enemy is against me and principals are against me. Principals are not against you until you are a person that is going to affect the nation. You work at Burger King, principalities are not against you. The kingdom of darkness work intelligently. It is, like, it is like a mafia system. It has ranks. It works intelligently. It will never send a principality after somebody who can't even handle the workings of a demon. Principalities will be after an individual like a Rob Parsley who's declaring moral clarity. Principalities, are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Okay, so you got that, you got that. So when you get ready to go and pray and you start doing battle against principalities, now you know that you're warring against the democracies. You're warring against the political assignments of Satan's, like same-sex marriage and all this stuff that's trying to come about to pervert the institution of the way God had intended family to be. Under the rankings of principalities, you've got powers, and powers, and the Greek word for powers is exhaustia, it's delegated authority, it's orders from the principalities that affect and infect structures. It affects the five pillars of our nation, marriage, family, government, education, and the church. So when we begin to pray in the spirit, we're not just praying aimlessly. When we begin to pray and while you out there crying and, 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 and travailing, oh God, do it. You better stop for a moment and say, now Satan, I break your powers. Because if you don't ever break his powers, then you know what? While you still praying and speaking in tongues, he still have free access to your family. He still have free access to what they teach your kids at school. Because I believe they can teach something warped, but I, I believe that your prayers can call a dull spirit to hit your child and seal their ears from whatever is being trying to be infiltrated into them. Somebody say that's good. How many, how many learning something? Then we have the rulers of darkness, and the rulers of darkness is our, is, is our, our, our cosmological system. It's our zodiac. That's where you get the zodiac signs, and people, and my sign is Capricorn. The reason why I act crazy every March, because that's what my signs say I'm supposed to do, and I don't get along with, with, with. Taurus and the Capricorn don't get along. You come out of all that foolishness, because because the zodiac, please turn this speaker up. I, I done pointed to it 50 times and I'm not gonna keep pointing. I'm, I'm trying to do this in a discreet manner. The zodiac is the blinding of the minds of people to truth, keeping them in a state of darkness that facilitates sin. 
So when you come against the rulers of darkness, you're coming against the thing that keeps you blind. Have you ever seen people like this in your family? That you say, now, is she just so stupid that she don't see that? It's like, why does she keep going back to him? Don't she know he ain't no good? Because she's under a spirit of the rulers of darkness. So when you pray, you just can't say, help her, Lord. You got to say, I break the spirit of the rulers of darkness over Gwen's head because and in less than 24 hours, I promise you, she will start seeing. I wish I had somebody to understand that when you pray, you get immediate results. When you pray, effectual. Touch somebody and tell them, if you pray fervently, you might have to wait a while on some stuff. But if you pray effectually, you get a right now answer. Okay, I don't think y'all heard what I just said. I don't think, I don't think y'all heard. I don't think because, because we're under the tradition of the church that says wait on the Lord. Yes, there are some things that you have to wait on. But the activity of the devil is something that he's been giving us the power to shut him down now. somebody I feel something right there the Bible said he has placed Satan under our feet which means all the stuff that he does he is illegal okay sit down sit down sit down sit down, sit down. let me just, let me just. Under, okay Okay, let me just say this to you. Satan is the power and the prince of the air. He's, a, he, he's, the, he's the power prince of the second, the second heaven. The first heaven is the stars and the moons and the clouds and all of that. The third heavens is where our heavenly father resides. The second realm is called the realm of of the, of, of the world, world meaning atmospheric. Let me explain it. Atmospheric. Satan is a spirit. He is not allowed to do anything except he has a submitting body. So if he, if he, if he, if you're trying to pray and, 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 and all of a sudden something falls off your mantelpiece, you can emphatically rebuke him because, and you can let him know that you know that he's playing illegally because he's not allowed to show manifestation without a body. Okay. I'm not, I'm not. And so he cheats to make you afraid of him. He cheats to keep you out of prayer. I'm not hearing you. He shows up in, in, in spiritual manifestations on the wall to get you scared so you can stop praying. He, oh, come on, somebody. But you need to rebuke him and say, you ain't nothing but an illusion because you don't even have the power to do nothing. You know why? Because you're illegal. Where is your body?
And see, you have to understand, you have to learn his manifestations. You have to learn, you have to learn the tactics of his manifestations by what you're praying for. You have to learn what he is most interested in by what he responds to. Okay, I'm gonna say that again. When I'm in prayer and I'm walking around in prayer, and I'm, 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 I'm trying to, you know, move in the spirit. And, and, and all of a sudden, um, I come out of that, that, that form of prayer and I lay down and go to sleep or, or whatever on the threshing floor. And then I feel demonic activity grab my legs or grab my arms or sit on my chest like I can't breathe. Have anybody ever experienced that? Where you feel like you followed in your sleep and all that kind of, all, all that kind of, well then what it does is it allows me to, 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 to watch this. I don't, I don't try to fight when that thing happened because the battle is not mine. So when that particular activity starts happening, you know, I'm, I'm still and the blood is being applied from within. I, I don't try to fight that physically because I know that that is, that is Satan responding to what it is I've just travailed about. He's responding out of anger because, watch this, because, watch this, because in the spirit I have shut down all of his demonic activity, which means I have made it impossible for him to find a body at that point to reenact what I just canceled. So the only person that's left to attack is me, but he needs to understand that even when he comes after me, that the weapons of the mind warfare are not carnal. Are you hearing me? That no weapon that's formed against me shall prosper. So all you are is mad because you can't do nothing about it. You don't have power to take my life. You can't kill me in the spirit. I'm not here. Nobody preach back to me. You can't touch me. I can't shut you out. And ain't nothing you can do about it. Quick example. Let me give you a quick example. I gotta move. I gotta move. I gotta. I gotta. I gotta move on to this. It's like if I hit you. It's like if I hit you, and then you hit me back. You know, and I hit you, and you hit me back. But what if, Prophet Johnson, I hit you, and then you go to hit me back, and I disappear? See, because, 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 because when you walk in prayer, I, walk, I walked in prayer as Juanita Bynum Weeks. So Satan knows that Juanita Bynum is coming to pray. But I walk in prayer as a human being and I start praying in the flesh. And as long as I'm praying in the flesh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord touch, Lord do it, Lord do it. He recognizes me praying. But the minute I say, do it, da 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 in the name, no, no, do this, do this, is it, but break this, break this, break this, I break this, I cancel this, da 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 da. He recognizes me, I'm hitting him, he sees me. I break it, da da da, I break it, I break it, I break it, I break this, I break that, I pull down this, I shut down this, da 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 da. And, and he's ready, he's, he's ready to jump me back until I say, in the name of Jesus, I just disappear. for the Jesus in me like he did when he reached for the Jesus that went to the cross and he reaches thinking that there's a crucifixion, another crucifixion in, in, in order that all of a sudden I get in tongues but then he really can't find me. So then he starts throwing stuff around the room and kicking up blankets and, and making the air conditioner come on because you know what? He's mad and he got to fight somebody but he can't find nobody to fight. He is a defeated foe. Oh, he don't like me today. He don't like me today. He don't like this today. He don't like this today. But he is a defeated foe. He doesn't like it. He doesn't like it. Hallelujah. Sit down, y'all. Let me just.
next rank in the spiritual wickedness in high places, perverted, depraved, debased. This is the spirit that tried to keep you down. This is the spirit that tried to keep his feet on your, on your family. This is the spirit that tried to deprive you of what's rightfully yours. And then this is the spirit that tried to pervert your mentality about what you think you should have. Oh, ain't nobody in our family never had that. And ain't nobody in our family never graduated from college. And ain't nobody in our family never bought their own house. Mm -mm, that's spiritual wickedness. Am I helping anybody today? Am I helping anybody today? Spiritual wickedness affects zones and dimensions and the mind. And it inspires perception and fantasies. That's why the Bible said casting down every imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? And then we get to devils and demons. Now watch this. Devils and demons, this is gonna this is going this is gonna get you right here because because devils and demons, according to the book of Revelation 16, 13 through 14, devils and demons are the spirits that that mainly operate and cause spiritual deception because devils and demons are the ones who show forth their manifestations through the through the workings of miracles and signs. Spiritual wickedness, as I just forestated, is a thing that, you know, causes you to, you know, sin and all and all that, and, you know, get all perverted and just off in your head. Devils and demons, they operate in full manifestations of, of signs and wonders and miracles. Okay. Because Satan understands protocol and he understands the working of the human body, he also understands that human beings are moved by things that they cannot control. They are excited by illumination, fixation, extraterrestrial. Because they were created to worship a God, they're constantly seeking for spirituality without God. So they don't want to yield to the God that created them, but there's something in their nature that will keep pulling after the supernatural. That's why you got people going after crystals and, 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 and purple crystals and, and, and going after new age and, and, and meditation and, and, and all, of this, all of this transcendental meditation and all of this warp Scientology stuff because we are, we are spiritual by nature. So we will always seek for something spiritual. That's why we go after the psychic and that's why we're overwhelmed by people that can tell us stuff that's true. Come on, somebody. Because we love to be illuminated by the fantasies of something that we cannot believe. Our favorite word is, I don't believe that. Our favorite word is, I can't believe that happened. So we're enthralled by that. And so what happens is, is Satan keeps us on a realm and in a trend of having perverted thought patterns and unclean spirits. But he keeps us enthralled and illuminated in the kingdom by signs and workings of miracles. So then he's saying to us that isn't this powerful? So we can look at what's powerful but not what's clean because God is not requiring you to get into the kingdom with what's powerful he's requiring that you be able to stand before him in peace by what you have kept clean and so the devil diminishes the thing about being clean and he amplifies the things about gifts and talents and callings and miracles I don't hear y'all talking to me and so we think because a person can work a miracle that that person is saved because they can cast out a devil the Bible said that demons can cast out demons that devil speaking tongues up and they tremble. Whoa, I can't get no help in here today. I can't get no help in here today. Y'all sitting here looking at me like, oh my God. It, it, it means nothing when you see a miracle because the devil can work a miracle. Ask Moses when he threw down his rod. God help me to help your church today. 
God help me to help your church today. Oh, so-and-so gave me a word from the Lord. Mm -hmm. She gave you a word from the Lord from another, from another category of demons and devils. And another category of demons and devils is a spirit of familiarity where they have followed you from the day that you were born and gathered information and like you. They know what you like. They know what you don't like. They know what kind of men you like. That's why when the devil come to prophesy to you, he'll prophesy a light-skinned man with curly hair because he already knows your nature. But the devil just don't know your future. I'm not here. Nobody talk to me right there. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me right there. And that's why you got to get in God and purify your life so God can begin to show you what his will is and what your destiny is. Because the Bible said in the last days, if it be possible, even the very elect will be fooled and tricked. I'm not hearing y'all say nothing right there because because see church is going up like flies in this hour anybody can get a big church anybody can have a nice church anybody can prophesy anybody can preach I turn on television and from one channel to the next it's preachers 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 people I've never heard of you understand what I'm saying because the devil knows image the devil knows frame he knows fantasy he knows how to create an illusion I'm not hearing nobody say nothing. But it's only the anointing that destroys a yoke. And the real power don't work in nothing that's not clean. Because we ain't talking about gifts now. Okay. Sit okay. so down, let me just let me just do this. to the book of Leviticus 20 and 6 we're talking about that the spirit of familiarity worked with wizards and witches okay spiritual tongue talking wizards and witches God I just said something right there God I just said something right there Some of y'all, some, some of y'all, some of y'all, the devil try to make you think you're crazy. You know, you see people, they just moving in the power of God, and you be sitting there like, I, it's something though. I don't know what it is, but it's something way down in my Holy Ghost that something about that ain't right. Can't put your hand on it. Can't figure it out. But something in your witness says the end of this thing, the root of this thing is not clean. Can I teach today? How do you know it's not clean? Let's go to Psalms 115. Let's go to Psalms 115. Let's go to Psalms 115. Psalms 115. Oh, he don't like this. He hates me. Psalms 115 and, and 16 says, The heavens are the Lord's heavens, but the earth has he given to the children of men. Now watch this. Watch this, watch this. He's given to the children of men. Now go to Psalms 8, 4 through 6. Because you got to know what you got rights over. Just going to flip through here a little bit. <clears throat> Psalms 8, 4 through 6. What is man that you are mindful of him and the son of 
earthborn man that you care for him, yet you have made him but a little lower than God or heavenly beings, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things I can't, I can't get y'all to go with me right there because y'all don't y'all saying amen, I know, I know, but you don't know and I tell you why you don't know. Because if you knew, thank you, Jesus, then you won't let nothing stop you from having what you deserve in this lifetime. Then you will break the power of the enemy that's holding back your dominion because you're not supposed to be poor and raggedy and struggling. You're supposed to have dominion over the earth. I speak to the earth and it yields to me what rightfully belongs to me. I control the system. I don't think y'all hear what I'm saying. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You may not have been born with it. Your family may have been born poor, but there's something that is in you that can pull the wealth out of the spirit. You can make the earth turn over for you. works I don't think you understand what I just said can you imagine what would happen in the spirit realm if the next time you prayed the same you that went in two weeks ago you say not mind you you just get off me and I just and the power of God is against you and you just take your hands off right now To the person that says, Satan, you are bound in all of your works. And I start with your principalities and I shut down every assignment that you have sent them to do. And I go to every spiritual power. I go to every spirit that's working in darkness. And I shut down all of your perversions and all of your imaginations. I cut them off at my family. I put a bloodline of Jesus around my family. And I forbid your assignment to cross this line. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. Say that I bind every imagination, every spirit of perversion that's hanging over my brothers and my sisters. I kill every influence, the spirit of lust that comes out of the evil spirits of darkness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Say that I bind every demon. I bind every demonic force that comes to hinder and rule and prophesy and prophesy ill feelings and prophesy wrong direction. I cancel every false prophet in the spirit. I cancel every ruling spirit that will come to hinder my family, hinder my assignment, and I speak by the power of God and I place the blood of Jesus on my family from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. I declare this very day that you have lost your ruling power and I decree that's a whole nother level of prayer so y'all better leave me alone y'all better leave me alone because I'm out there now Jesus I'm out there now mm. 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 Familiar, familiar spirits. Let me, let, me, let me just touch that. Because familiar spirits are spirits of witchcraft and wizardry. Witch, witchcraft, and wizard, witchcraft and wizardry spirits are, are um, chameleon type um, 
illusional spirit. They can change themselves into looking like and sounding like. I done heard some demons speaking some tongues that you would you just knew was God. So spiritual witchcraft is not the witchcraft that we talk about right now that you know takes the stuff and stick it in your heart and 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 and, and try to get you to, you know, and, and hurt your stomach and you know, witchcraft where they take a doll and they and they do all that 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 kind of stuff, you know, the voodoo stuff and and all of that. that, that that's 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 not what I'm talking about. That's not what I'm talking about. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the transference. Okay, I'm gonna say something here that's just so deep. I'm talking about the transference of spirit where a person can be used under a spirit of witchcraft until that person can actually imitate, personify the image and the spirit of Christ and another person. And they carry that master spirit so heavy until anybody that they associate with. Okay, I'm going to give you a perfect example. Have you ever walked in church and you've seen a lady that joined the church and she's a new lady and don't nobody know her, she don't know nobody. And all of a sudden she started hanging with Sister Caroline. And the next thing you know, she started praising God like Sister Caroline. And she started speaking in tongues like Sister Caroline. And she said, that is a person that has a witchcraft spirit that had the power to transfer that spirit onto somebody else. It's like the body snatchers. It's like this, 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 this spirit is a master in the spirit realm. And so it keeps collecting people and collecting people and collecting people. And then all of a sudden in your church, you got a whole group of them that sound alike and act alike and shout alike. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me right there because I can't get nobody to say amen right there. Because some of y'all scared to say amen, but I'm not scared to say amen. And so, and so it's these kind of what the Bible calls sex and factions. Sex and factions. In the book of Ephesians, it talks about sex and factions. These are the things that try to come and subvert the church and try to undergird the whole prayer intercessory. Because these are people that are always going to be on the forefront. They're going to always let you know. They, they, oh my God. Ain't nobody, God ain't talking to nobody but them. They're the most spiritual people in the world. They see everything. They know everything. Anything you preach, they say, God told me that. God told me that. God told me that. That's a witchcraft spirit because there ought to be something in your spirit that you don't know or you don't have a need to come to church. If you know everything and you are a witness to everything, then that tells me that you are under a familiar witchcraft spirit because now you are subverting information from the spirit realm illegally. I didn't hear y'all talk to me. I didn't hear y'all talk to me. Oh, Jesus. I'm going to say something right here. You got information, but God didn't give it to you. Okay. Well, how did you get it? How, 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 how can you say that? Because some of y'all said, well, Satan don't know everything. Mm -mm. He don't know everything, but he knows God. He knows God. He's been there with God. Oh, you don't hear me. It was God that emulated through him. Every celestial being has the presence of God emulating through it. It was him that was around the throne. He was the most for praise and the greatest and the most magnificent angel of them all. He was the apple of God's eye. He knows God's work. He knows God's spirit. He knows God's assignment. He knows what God wants to do. Are you hearing me?
So he'll say, it's all right. Cuss pastor cuss every now and then, but he still got revelations. You ain't gonna tell me he ain't a man of God. That's okay. My first lady, she cuss every now and then, and she used the B word and the A word, but that's all right, honey, cause she powerful when she take that microphone. Are you hearing what God is saying? That's all right. I know an evangelist and a prophet that's powerful. Honey, the power of God hit the church, but I know he sleep with women, but you understand what I'm saying? The enemy now is operating illegal. He's passing out the mysteries of God to those that are unperverted because he's after a nation and he knows he can't get us anymore with cigarettes and drinking and alcohol. So now he has to come in the church and deceive us with spirituality. Now do you see why the Bible tells us that disobedience is as the sin of witchcraft? Because you can be an angel that when you, when you move that the wind chimes through your body and causes the most elaborate music that heaven has ever heard. You can be the angel that is so beautiful that human eyes can't even stand to look on you. But if you can't obey, or you and all of your beauty have just been transformed into witchcraft. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can speak in tongues and preach the gospel. You can be the church's head intercessor. But if you don't obey God, my God, then everything you do is witchcraft. Everything you pray is witchcraft. And the reason why you don't see no results, because the devil cannot cast the devil out. Jesus said that the wicked has come. The spirit of this enemy of the world has come, but he finds none of him in me. Satan can't find a place in my spirit. anything Jesus said he can't find anything in me that that belongs to him the Hebrew Bible in the book of John said says the Hebrew Bible uh, illustration of that same scripture says and when the prince of this world come he finds no association in me with him pray until there is no association I can pray for me hallelujah but I cannot pray for anybody else as long as there is an association Because the Bible said that when the sons of Sceva saw others casting out devils and Jesus commanding demon spirits, they came into the city and tried to do the same thing. And the demon said, wait a minute now. Jesus, we know. We don't know who you are. And the Bible said, and they jumped them and stripped their clothes off of them. You know why? Because the devil knows when there's an association. You can't just use words. You just can't speak in tongues. You can't say say that I bind you. I'm going to tell you what your binding power is. Your binding power is your sanctified life. Your binding power is the cleanliness of your heart. Your binding power is the way I live. It's the way I talk. It's the way I move. My binding power is my purification. Sit down. I got to... 
Everest is today. Can I give you scripture to back this up? Can I give you the Bible to back this up? The Bible said that Jesus walked into the city. He moved into the city. He never opened up his mouth. And the demons that was in that young man, they began to cry out, Why, Jesus, have you come to torment us? He never opened up his mouth. But they knew by his very presence that they were bound. tormented just by him showing up can I ask a question today what demonic forces get tormented by you just showing up what spirits do you agitate when you just show up I'm not hearing nobody preach to me in here what demon and what devil from what level and what dimension get aggravated when you show up I ain't saying nothing I just showed up. So Jesus, why you come to torment us? We have nothing to do with you. And Jesus said, shut up and come out of the man. And they said, but can you just please look at this? Unless we are abiding in some kind of flesh, we are illegal. So they beg, don't make us illegal. Can we go in the swine? And I'm going to tell you why he permitted that. Because the Bible said that when Jesus got into the Garden of Sibony and he's prayed and he prayed and he prayed and he prayed, prayed, the Bible said, and when Satan had finished his course, you you didn't hear what I said. Because there is a course that demonic spirits have to go through. It is our job to make sure that whatever your course, whatever you've been sent to do, If the Lord permits you to remain, watch this, and he does not at this present second give me the power to cast you out, and he permits because there's a working in me, and I want to, oh, let me make this plain, let me make this plain, because a lot of times when Satan comes to do things, we think he's coming to do it against us, but he's coming to train us in the spirit. Whenever there's a lesson that God wants us to learn, he would not cast the enemy out immediately. He would allow that spirit to remain so that there's something that God can teach us in it. And so then what we're being taught how to do is channel the workings of that spirit so that it doesn't operate illegally. I know you came here because God allowed you to be here. And if I rebuke you and it ain't gone yet, then there's a reason why God got it here. But while you here, you gonna play fair. saying because immediately immediately when it happens it's one of those times when you're under an attack from the enemy and you feel like you can't take no more and then six months later you don't even know how you still surviving it's because the bible said that my yoke is easy my burden is light and so when you come under an attack from the enemy but still you don't know why you keep shouting in church and you don't know why you won't give up and you don't know why that in the midst of you saying i can't take no more the holy ghost comes down on you and you feel his presence because when that start happening you ought to go ahead and say, well, God, I thank you. I thank you for the fiery trial. I thank you, God. I thank you for what I'm going through. I thank you for the tribulation. Because tribulation work in patience. And patience experience. And I don't want to cast the devil out so fast that I miss my experience. Let me close with this. We, we don't, we don't. We. What profit is bound to, 
let me ask you something. So to explain this thing one more time about, about, about then why must my, why must my trial last? And why must, why don't the Lord just get me out of this thing right now? And why don't he, and why don't God just work this thing out right this minute? Because it's too many now. It's too many now. You, this, this is like in the spirit, the way God showed it to me. The way God is showing it to me right now is like the year of the baby booms when everybody was having babies and everybody was having babies. Everybody, and that's what's happening in the kingdom. It's like the year of the baby booms where every you look around, everybody's having babies, everybody having babies, but nobody has experience. Nobody has experience with demonic presence. Everybody just having babies. And all the babies that's come out and saying, We love you, Jesus. But nobody knows how to get in a warfare. Nobody knows how to do battle in a warfare. Nobody has to warfare with a perfect warfare. Nobody knows how to ask God to teach my hands to do battle. And so here we are. We all love in Jesus, but we're being picked off one by one with stupid, frivolous stuff that we should have the power to cast down. But you know what? Nobody has trained us because everybody's either running from a trial, quitting church, or rebuking the devil. Nobody wants to stand face to face with the devil and wrestle with him all night long. Hey, that was the reason why Jesus wrestled with the enemy all night long. That was the reason why that after he cried and he begged and he pleaded, God said nothing to him. nothing to him. He didn't help him. He didn't strengthen him. He didn't encourage him. He didn't send him a prophet in Gethsemane and say, the Lord just told me to tell you, Jesus, it's going to be all right. didn't send them his intercessor the person that says the Lord just called me to be your intercessor he just called me just to really pray with you and just really walk you through this his prayer partners went to sleep his prayer partners went to sleep and heaven shut its doors And God never said to him, go on through, son. I know it's hard for you, but you go on and do this thing for me because I got a reward for you. He prayed until sweat poured from him as of drops of blood. Can I, can, can I make this plain? Can I, he was about to die in prayer. One translation said that in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed until he had entered into nervous breakdown level. Because he had never, ever, ever, him and his father was one. He had never, ever, ever been disconnected. He had never, ever, ever felt a disconnect. He had never ever been without the will and the sound and the feel and the impression of his father because everything he did, he did by the movement and by the power and the assignment and the unction of his father. And all of a sudden, he's out here praying. He done left heaven. He done left his father. He done come out of obedience. He doing what God told him to do. And now God says nothing and shuts up heaven on him and don't send him any comfort. And he's doing the will of God. I'm just gonna leave church because I'm just gonna quit because I'm gonna quit. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna do it no more. And I ain't gonna do this no more. And I ain't gonna say it no more. And I ain't coming back to the ministry because people just don't understand. I just feel so all alone. Hold on. Hold on. Let me just say this to you. No comfort, no encouragement, no words of strength, no, no, Jesus, you were about to do something awesome, so just, just, just walk your course. None of that, none of that. And 
as long as he prayed, as hard as he prayed, as much as he stayed there, after all of his miracles, all the stuff he had done. Heaven said nothing until Jesus said. I don't like what's going on with me, God. He got honest. I don't like this feeling of you not being here. I don't like the feeling that all of a sudden the crowds were thronging me. And now I'm in a place now that I'm praying and not even you answer me and I done, I done turned water into wine I done did all that stuff and now, and, now, and now all I'm asking you to do is to help me and he said and this thing right here is bitter and I don't like it and this is a bitter cup and please take this from me will you do this for me but 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 nevertheless not my will but 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 but, but thine will be done and the Bible said the book of John that when he said that then God sent an angel you don't hear me you don't hear me his strength did not come until he yielded to go through the course of the trying of his faith I'm not hearing nobody preach to me right there I'm not hearing nobody listen listen his strength did not come the power of help did not come until he agreed with God that I'm going to go through this experience with the devil. Okay. I'm going to have my devilish experience. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Why? Why? Why did help come then? Because God was saying at that point, I want to teach somebody the devil. I want to teach somebody the cross. I want to teach somebody how to endure. I want to show somebody how to go through. I want to show somebody how to get to the cross between the sixth and the ninth hour and heaven go black again. I got to show somebody how to walk through something on just what I said. When they don't feel me, when they can't find me, when they can't trace me, when they don't even know if I'm still with them, but they walking on what I told them. I got to find somebody to understand the real power of obedience to my word, that my word is not predicated on how you feel or what's around you or if it's good or if it's bad. It's my word. Jesus was being given the experience. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. You don't hear me because y'all looking at me. He was being given the experience. Wait a minute. He was being given the experience, Catherine, of being handled for days by Satan. Y'all don't. Y'all don't. Y'all. I don't know if y'all understand what I'm talking. Handled for days. Handled for days. From the from the Garden of Gethsemane and got up from praying and here come the soldiers. And then here comes somebody that was supposed to love him and kiss him and betray him. Marched from judgment hall to judgment hall. Crown of thorns pressed on his head. Beaten with cat nine tails until he was unrecognizable. You don't hear me. The Bible said that his face and his body looked like a plowed field. That he was he had no comeliness. That means you couldn't even recognize that it was Jesus. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing. Whipped and beaten and left to be infected and, and marched and made to carry your own cross up on the hill and being still saying that you're the son of God and being mocked. No God, no God, no strength, oh, no, no prayer partners. Nobody to encourage your walk and say, be encouraged, Jesus. It's almost over. But even those that said they believe begin to doubt. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing. Even Peter, who had been revealed to him who he was, denied him. Y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all ain't hearing this. You better wake up and stop being babies and get that pacifier out of your mouth and learn that this is a suffering way. And if you don't learn how to go through the fire, you will never be nothing in God. This is not the hour to faint in the day of adversity. This is the hour that heaven ought to stand. Stand anyhow.
not here nobody talk to me. Mm. Mm. My feelings is not my stand. My circumstances is not my stand. My opportunities or my missed opportunities is not my stand. I don't stand on what's been handed to me. I stand on what's been given to me. I stand on what he said. I march up Golgotha's hill. I carry my cross. I get to the top of the hill and they, they pierce me. They nail my hands and my feet. They pierce me in my side. I'm thirsty and they offer me vinegar. Where was the saints? Okay, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I ain't getting nobody's. Where was the saints at the foot of the cross saying, Jesus, be encouraged. It's all right. It's going to be all right because we know you the son of man. You dying for all of our sins. He looked around and couldn't find a witness. Heaven went black. Then though he had not heard from heaven, God had not turned his back. But he got to the point of the pit of darkness where God had to turn his back on him because of sin. And he said, Abba, Father, why have thou, why have thou forsaken me? And he died. Oh, you didn't hear me. He didn't send no host of angels to help him now. Because that's the lying spirit of illusion that the devil penetrates in the body of Christ for us. That everything we get in, here come God. Just hold on because at the end, God going to help you. God ain't going to always do it. Okay, I'm going to help somebody today. There's some stuff God ain't going to get you out of. Huh? I'm preaching right now. I'm preaching right now. There's some stuff he ain't going to fix. There's some stuff that you just going to fry in for years. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. Because we ain't some kind of delusional fit talking about God going to fix it all. He going to work it all out. No, he's not. He did not send anybody to stop Jesus from dying. He said, no, no, no. This is my will. I'm not hearing y'all say that. We always want his will to be, honey, it's blessed me. This, this, this was my breakthrough. God gave me my victory. And I can't believe I got set outside. This is the will of God concerning me. But why the Lord, you didn't send nobody to pay my rent. Why you let me get set outside? Because I want to know if your spirit will change whether you got a house or not. I want to know if your spirit will change on me if I take your car back. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I want to know if you will still shout if you have to go to the welfare place. I want to know in the projects, do you still have your testimony? Is the joy of the Lord your strength or Mercedes? So there are some things God won't do for the deliverance of your conviction. Remember, sweetie, he's always after making sure that your conviction stays delivered. Not whether or not you ride in the kind of house you want. But God, I believed you all the way up until the day of closing. And I knew you was going to give me the money. And it happened. And they, then they said I couldn't get the house. And God, you failed me. My faith says I did not get the house. But I still believe God to be all that he is. Let me just just say this and I let me say this and I quit. God was delivering Jesus from the religious desire to be cloaked with his defense in front of people. I'm not hearing y'all. Y'all don't like me today. Because see, in front of our unsaved loved ones that's been teasing us, we always want to, that's all right. You're going to see, honey, God going to do it for me. And it gets worse. And then you don't understand why. They drive a Mercedes and you still walking. Because what you're looking for God to do is come and glorify you. And it ain't time for you to be glorified. The son of man was not glorified until he went to the cross. Okay, I'm not hearing nobody say nothing right there. He didn't get his Mercedes before he died. He had to look defeated in front of the whole nation. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing. And until you go through the process where you look defeated and you look like you told how and you look like God ain't with you and you look like you failing, then you know what? There is no victory. Victory is only in the death of what you suffer.
Don't want to go through nothing. Don't want to be processed through nothing. Don't want to take nothing. Can't handle nothing. Can't, can't deal with nothing. I, I just can't take this. Power is not transferred until all that you are is dead. God allowed him to be built up with a great reputation. The healer turned water into wine. Opened up blinded eyes. Walked on water. Two fish, five loaves of bread, fed five thousand with food left over. And all that he was and all that he got the glory for had to die. You got people here that want power. But I can count the people on two hands that can really say I want all power. Because all power, all power means no power. That means I first have to have no power. Oh, yeah, they had to walk across the cross and say, Jesus, where are your miracles at now? Bring yourself down. You the man. You walked on water. Unloose your hands. Can't you do that? The Bible said he could have called 10,000 angels to help him. But he entered into his season where power was, whenever you enter into your season where power is being transferred, heaven will send you no help. Okay, I'm not, I'm not, I, I can't, let me go over here and say that to somebody over here because because everybody over there looked at me like, what is you talking about? Can I just say this right now? Can I just say this? And the only people that are spiritual are going to understand this. When you are in a position where you feel powerless and you are in a position where what you are trusting and believing God for, it has hit the bottom and there is no way out, baby, that's when it's about to break forth because, because, be, be, and see, that's the point where the devil gets you to cussing and being mad and, and talking about it didn't happen, but that's the point where you stand in victory and you begin to praise God because, because God got to shut everything down humanistically in order for it to become a supernatural thing are y'all hearing me this next go round in your life God gonna get the glory your mom ain't gonna get the glory your daddy won't get the glory it's gonna be God God I wish I had somebody to praise him right there What the Lord was saying to Jesus is you got all these people out here hyping you about something that Satan can do. And so now you out here on an even playing field. Magicians can walk on water, Jesus. Witches can raise people from the dead. Now if you gonna be Jesus, I got to put you a cut above. But name me a witch that can die and in three days raise itself and go down to the pit of hell and get the keys to death, hell, and the resurrection. Come, come on, somebody. So then, so, then, so then when you get back, when you get back into the earth realm, <laughs> let your disciples do all that miracle stuff now. <laughs> Throw them the power to to go ahead and cast out devils and, and all of that because that ain't even your grade. Yeah. 
So then the body of Christ, people in the body of Christ must come to this level. But people say, oh, Jones is so, so powerful. Oh, she da, 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 da. And that's where I am now. It's like, anybody can do this. Anybody can preach. Where is the next level? I'm, I'm, I'm. Mm. See, instead of saying, I'm just really going through, just pray for me. So how you doing? Going through the fire right now. It's God working something. He working something out for It's a little rough right now. But how you doing? Blessed and favored. Because he's trying to show me something that I didn't know. You see, when you have your experience and you go through the process, you know the devil. That's why Jesus can look at any spirit and say, I know you the devil. I know you a demon. Different color, different size, different shape. Same spirit. I hope I've helped somebody today. Yeah. And Jesus walked in and picked up the book. He said, for the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he has anointed me. Cast out devils. Give sight to the blind. That's number one. Two things. Two things. He can cast the devil out. Is because... He came through the channel of purification and he remained pure. See, the spirit of the Lord can be on you. Well, let me put it this way. The spirit of the enemy can be upon you because a demon can channel the obedience of another demon. If I was a principality and you were just a power and I was higher than you in ranking, I can tell you, I'm going to get up in church and I'm going to call you out and I want you to scream like you coming out. And I want you to show a manifestation that you coming out. I want you to throw up on the floor. And then I want you to speak in tongues because after a while I'm going to say to you, now be filled with the Holy Ghost and I want you to speak in tongues. And I want you to run around this church and I want your tongues to be so strong. Whole church go up and praise. Next two or three weeks you're sleeping with all the women in this church but your tongues are still strong because you are under the influence of a principality. So I can cast the devil out because of the protocol of the kingdom of darkness. They cannot be disobedient to rank because they cannot go into zones that they don't belong in. A demon and a devil cannot jump to a principality realm. They have no skill there. They're not knowledgeable there.
the enemy doesn't send demons and devils after me. Because he cannot pervert me. He cannot cause me to become delusional about who God is. Do you get what I'm saying? Why then would he send principality and powers after me? He would send principalities and powers after me because not only am I affecting what they have instituted, but I am instituting another institution. When the Lord gave me this 5 a.m. prayer, and it's going to be traveling all over the country, it's going to be moving, I began to institute another institution in the middle of Satan's institution. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. This ain't no small fry stuff right here. This ain't no, and they talked about me and that hurt my feelings and that, and I heard this and I heard that about me. That's so, that's just not my grade. Yeah. 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 Try to abort this assignment that he's given me and then you have got me and he has he has hit me tell me I can't pray my husband in January we're actually for Christmas just bought me a new house for Christmas 8,000 square feet let me just say this I'm, I'm just I, no, just hardly nothing in it and I'm working profusely on this prayer room like it is going to be the first thing that everybody see when they walk in my house. And it's upstairs on the back side of the... <laughs> and I'm like, no, I don't want the carpet like that. I want it like this. I want it gold around here and I want the center of it to be purple. And I want this and I want... No, I take these. I don't want these doors right here because I want to put curtains right here and I want to put the refrigerator in there and I want the microwave in there. And I want to... No, you got to have them come and do some electrical power. And I'm driving him crazy. <laughs> Ain't nothing in the living room but a beat up red couch that came from our, from our first apartment. Ain't nothing in the kitchen. I ain't even bought no flowers. I ain't even bought a picture. Nothing. This is going to get ready to be August. And you know somebody got a new house. They, they out shopping. Every time I go away and come back, did you get the power running through the, did you get the cord running through, is it, is it refrigerated? So then I just start getting a little shady on it. When I started coming home and I didn't see stuff done, I was like. <laughs> so this time when I came home, he had everybody in there working. Now put this cord in there and put that, that, put that up underneath. <laughs> Is that the way you want it? Before I got on the plane, Benita can tell you, I was in my prayer room, laying on the floor and just reading and just, and they were just all in there with the running. And we got you wireless hookup in here. So if you want to play your music, just hit this on your computer and it comes out in the system. And do you want this box over here? And do you want that over there? Do you want this over there? And I said, nah, I want the chair rails to go around the wall. I want you to put the wood around. I want that to be gold. The bottom of the wall, I want it to be the same color, the purple, the carpet, and the top, I want it to be lilac. And da -da -da, I got my Ark of the Covenant thing in the corner. I want this. I want. And, he, and my husband's looking at me like, because in my spirit, this is the most important place in the house. This right here gonna keep us married. It's gonna keep us loving Jesus. It's gonna keep us with a house. That furniture downstairs ain't gonna last. So he looked at me and I looked at him and he kind of chuckled and, and I said to him, I said, you know why I'm fixing up this prayer room? I said, because you gotta keep my devils down. This right here is gonna keep me dead. 
this right here is gonna keep me saying yes, honey. Cause you don't ever want the other one to say what? This little room right here, the smallest room in the whole house, is gonna keep me saying yes, dear. I did something, well today I ain't didn't, the whole three years we've been married, I ain't never cooked. I'm telling my prophet is I don't cook. I preach, pray, and prophesy. That's how you married me. I don't clean, I don't do none of that. I went in that prayer room, came out, and my husband liked tuna fish, and I was just making tuna fish. It, Everybody, my workers was walking through the kitchen like. <laughs> One of my sisters called me. She said, what are you doing? I said, I'm making tuna. She said, okay. I ain't seen you walk through a stove in over 10 years. What? And I'm, sit, I'm standing there, Prophet Johnson, cutting up eggs and just buying the devil, saying, come on out of here, chief. Because the enemy said, honey, you the prophet of the nation. You got to go and get on a plane and go and teach the people in prayer to cut, cutting up eggs. I ain't got time for this foolish. Said, die devil. The man wants some tuna fish. Come on under, devil. I was chopping. By the time I got to the onions, I was chopping mad. Help me, Jesus. So say yes. And don't nothing make you madder than them coming through the kitchen saying, he pulled out his cell phone and said, baby, let me take a picture of you. I was like. <laughs> and then you get them passes through the kitchen where they come by four and five times and kiss you and say, I really love you. I said, no, you love seeing me look all submitted and cook eggs and tuna, that's what you love. You love seeing the powerful woman of God be broken under your powers. When I had to cook that tuna, that was a principality he sent after me. institution of prayer it doesn't just change things it changes me <laughs> it changes everything that that spirit will get in you for real and you'll start hearing it talk mother and it'll say you gotta start cooking a little bit of something for this man I've had housekeepers for the last 12 years. I don't know what it means to wash and make, make a bed. Oh, no. Just getting out the bed, making beds. I said, okay, something is happening to me. I didn't even know how to turn the washing machine on, mother. I had to stand there for the longest trying to figure out, now how you turn this thing on? do you turn this on? So what am I saying? You might be, God might be pressing you out in another area. And some of y'all are so tickled at me because you're saying, it ain't nothing to cook some tuna fish. It ain't nothing to make a bed. Not when you want to eat a burner. <laughs> I'm like the scripture that says, you have asked a hard thing of me. I don't have time for that. My mind is in heavenly places. I got spiritual things to do. I got, I got to hear the prophetic sound. I can't be making no bed. <laughs> and then they just get so sweet and so pleased. Baby, you, the bed looks so beautiful. I'll be like, oh. <laughs> and they just really love you then. And that may not be your challenge. But that's my challenge now. 
Your challenge may be, I told you to get up every day at four o'clock to pray. Now, for me, if you say get up every morning and pray, psh, that's, like, that's like breathing. That's like getting up every day and brushing my teeth. That is not a struggle for me. But that may be your struggle. And then it said, cook some tuna. Psh, you can cook it with your eyes closed. But then that becomes my struggle. But we're all being broken. Why? So that we can come into the power of prayer. All of it is our own individual obediences. It's what the Lord is requiring of you in order to release power out of your life. He may be saying to you, I'll, I'll give you power if you commit to pray every night at 12 midnight. Somebody else, he said, I'll give you power if you will commit to go to the nursing home every Thursday. He's saying to me, I'll give you power if you commit to fix that tuna fish. of it is listen to this I close with this if we're if we don't have the ability to war in every realm if we don't have the ability to have authority in every zone that Satan operates in then what's the sense in going to the first grade and you will never see the 12th grade because you can't get a job after you graduate the 12th grade am, 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 I, am I making sense so the church can't stay shouting and praising God because we didn't need the third grade and got an A. We can't be speaking in tongues and saying, hallelujah, honey, I got the victory because I made it to that sixth grade. People go on from high school to college and from college to master and doctorate and they get the highest realm of education because they want to know the epitome of the knowledge so that they can be the best at what they do so that they can be skilled at what they do, so that they can make top dollar, not just read between lines. When you become skilled at what you do and you become top rated at what you do, <laughs> then you're able to possess the land and you're lacking nothing. You're not deceived in any realms. Every faith walker that we have today Every Tuesday, how many people came from out of town? I wanted to ask that question. You came from out of town. You do not live in the city of Kansas City. Please stand up. You don't live in Kansas City. Where are you from? About 100 miles away. Wow, you. Joplin, Missouri. All three from Joplin, Missouri. Where are you from? Lawrence, Kansas. Where are you from? Warrensburg? Okay, okay. Where are you from? Green Valley, Missouri. T Tyler, Texas. <laughs> Dallas, Texas. Where are you from? Omaha, Nebraska. Where are you from? Wichita, Kansas. Where are you from? Columbia, Missouri. Alton, Illinois. Over here. Detroit, Michigan. Lincoln, Nebraska. Obnobster, Nobnobster, Missouri, okay. Over there, shout it out loud. Jefferson City, right here. Sedalia, Sedalia. Sedalia Missouri. Oh my God, we got them from everywhere. Over here. Topeka, Kansas. Omaha, Nebraska. Topeka. 
Culver's to New Mexico. Come on, somebody give God a hand in here. Somebody give God a hand in here. My God. My God. My God. Nashville, Tennessee. Houston, Texas. Nashville, Tennessee. Florida. Lincoln, Nebraska. Tulsa, Oklahoma. Tulsa. New Orleans. Michigan. Waver, Iowa. Manhattan, Kansas. California. Wow. Jackson, Tennessee.